everybody. And thanks for this opportunity to express gratitude for a few other ideas. For all of you who continue to make Fordham what it is and what we're all so proud of, and to your special guests at Fordham this evening, thanks very much for sponsoring this event. And to the family and members of the board of the Opus Prize Foundation, thanks for giving the prize. As you know, it's a tremendous new strength for growth, and our team will use it well. And I hope that the founder and the family of the Opus Prize Foundation takes great consolation in that. Everybody here knows that uh, the Jesuits always keep the door open to the lower classes. I've had experience with that myself. I was the last of eight wild Indian kids in a family that lived near Fort Apache, the very first mission on the Simpson Street in the South Bronx. Mike Mulligan gave me work in his grocery store, a big grocery store. And by the age of 10, I was making plenty of wampum for the good life, and I would see it then. <laughs> but my mother, she made me abandon the grocery business and apply to Ford and Cut. The rest was that process of being accepted not only into the prep, but into the Jesuits, trained to live for others, and finally, allowed out again to work with real civilized Indians in Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking about being back here with you young students this evening. I was reminded of how much fun my life has been and inspired to tell us something, hopefully without boring. I especially want to share some ideas related to that excellent and very clear video presentation of the working boy said to family and families and my forming. That cyclic generation after generation poverty, the families that need what the center can provide for them, does have some symptoms of, a, of an economic disorder. But we know that that kind of poverty is essentially spiritual problem. Not knowing and not practicing the moral values which are the basis of prosperity. And uh, to accompany those poor people out of that kind of poverty does not necessarily mean imitating the big eradicate poverty agencies. Many of those agencies are they seem structured to keep poverty growing stronger. They, uh, they throw money at the problem, but they don't demand any developmental accountability. They don't demand changes from the bad habits. And that, of course, promotes dependency and ultimately despair among the disenfranchised. An impact study of four decades of our work indicates that by accepting our challenge of changes, thousands of families and working kids have left poverty behind forever, both for themselves and for their descendants. You know, nowadays, in order to keep up with the world's so-called progress in social development systems, what you have to do is learn and simply use the new terminology. For example, you say, we have a clear vision with strategic planning to carry out a sustainable vision with verifiable indicators <laughs> of all success and no failure. <laughs> and keep a straight face. Otherwise, <laughs> no grants for the foundations and your religious superior to accuse you of wasting time reading cowboy stories instead of composing elegant projects for funding. 
learned that if any forward-looking company has to feature its CCA, in case you don't know what that is, that's your corporate competitive advantage. <laughs> Ours is that we work with the whole family. Everybody in the shack or nobody, because they all have to be involved in the same struggle and in the same need for mutual support in order to make the obligatory necessary changes. Besides, we sound real good at uh, high level meetings and we build ourselves as a family of families. Finally, in the view in the face of ever increasing worldwide poverty, and it's coming along nicely. What's our verifiable indicator of all success and no failure in curing in our mission to cure the evil of poverty? What is it? Jesus is. He simply had a tiny capacity to his big capacity to sacrifice, to live for us, and die for others. And we repeat that addition every time we celebrate Mass with the intention that the poor people themselves achieve enough prosperity here to want a holy eternity of the dead. So we just know. We're not failing any more than him is failing on the cross. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you.